Well, I definitely don't have a shirt with pie on it or cookies, but this Hoya does sort of resemble tortellini and that's at least a food. And the undulations on the leaves of this Hoya Kodata Sumatra resemble some sort of a wafer cookie, a Fig Newton cookie. Why do I actually even think that? This Vanadinite also looks like some sort of a dessert that I would want to bite into, especially with this sandy Moroccan matrix. Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. Today's video is gonna be outlining my favorite bakery fall fragrances. I mean something that's gonna be sweet, something that's gonna be savory, maybe a fruit but really like baked down and you get all the juices and the caramelization, that kind of a bakery type scent. And I do realize that this type of a definition of gourmand slash bakery is my definition that I'm using for this video. But anyways, yeah, this video is gonna be outlining my favorite gourmand slash bakery fall fragrances. And this is a category that for me has so much history because my sister and I grew up in the Yankee Candle and Bath and Body Works stores and basically the scent category that my mom liked the most was fall and winter gourmands and these type of like bakery fragrances. And so when I was really little, I definitely was not very into it. And now as I have gotten older, I sort of like this category. It's kind of becoming one of my more favorite categories. And I have tried a lot of bakery scents for the fall and winter, and I do have my own opinions on which ones I think are more fall-like and which ones are more winter-like. So if you see one in this video and you're like, why didn't I include that one? Or, you know, maybe it's because I haven't tried it. Maybe it's because it's in my winter video. Um, but anyways, yeah. So if this is something that you're interested in, then I hope that you're subscribed and and I hope that you keep on watching. As I always say at the start of these fragrance videos, there's always, always, always the chance that one of the fragrances that I really like or that sells really well for me, you might not like. And there's also the chance that a fragrance that you really like or that does well for you, I may have on my fails list. And I know that all of you who are regulars understand this, but I do just have to put this disclaimer out every time for all of you who are new, um, and this may be your first fragrance video that you're watching. The way I do this series is I usually choose three or five of my personal favorites that I have had extensive experience testing and or selling in my own candle line successfully. And then I also do honorable mentions and the fails. So in our, I think we have a total of five spots today for this one so a full five spots for a fall gourmand category um that is definitely a lot of places but in our number five position today we do have this oatmeal milk and honey fragrance by nature's garden and i do have a feeling that this fragrance is going to end up ranking higher but it is just ranking number five for me because i have only been testing this one for like the last five six months and i haven't officially sold it yet but this fragrance has a french vanilla note to it like i haven't quite smelled in any other fragrance um the vanilla you get in this one is something different it is a french vanilla and you do also get the classic oatmeal and the honey and you get sort of like a hawthorn note to this one I want to say and it has a base of a nutty almond and oh my god if you are familiar with the brambleberry I'm gonna put the name of the fragrance on the screen but it is um, one of their almond fragrances that I personally wasn't too into myself but a lot of my clients did really like it when I had this one in my line three years ago um two or three years ago i can't remember i think that was three winters ago but yeah oh my god this has that note in it in the base it throws really well too in um not in soy wax i did test this one in 464 soy with the wood wick and i was not happy with the scent throw at least with a wood wick um but in my beeswax soy and cocoa cream wax blend this oatmeal milk and honey did exceptionally well 
um, and filled a medium-sized room uh, with an eight ounce candle. So I was very happy with that. So yeah, this one does make my number five spot for my favorite gourmand fall fragrance of all time. And you could also sell this one in a year-round collection. I do plan to have this one in my rustic collection. I think this fragrance really comes to life in the fall, but with a lot of these fragrances, I think that you could make them work in a year-round collection. And this one definitely is one that I would say that about. In our number four spot today, we have this Toasted Pumpkin Spice by Candle Science. Now, I talked about this fragrance in one of my previous videos. I'll try to link it above. Um, I think it was my favorite pumpkin fragrances, and I will try to link that above. But yeah, this fragrance is, to me personally, and to a lot of my clients who have smelled this one, actually this fragrance um, was named by one of my clients. Um, I call it Spooky Kooky because it reminds me so much of a pumpkin snickerdoodle cookie. And my client actually named it Spooky Kooky, um, Shelby Unraveled. I gave her a shout out in my last video, but I'm gonna give her another shout out in this one as well for coming up with such an amazing name uh, for my candle line for this fragrance. But yeah, it is a classic pumpkin snickerdoodle. You get the cinnamon, you get the sugar. It is comforting and sweet. It's like a pumpkin cookie that is ooey gooey and with that cracked characteristic surface just filling your home um but it's like your grandma's recipe an age-old classic snickerdoodle but done pumpkin and you get that cinnamon and nutmeg and clove it is definitely gonna be more of like a 50 50 in my opinion between the pumpkin and the spices and um but yeah this one definitely takes my number four spot. I will also show you one of my candles. Um, this is my spooky kooky. Are we right side up here? Okay, here we go. If this is in focus, but um, yeah, this is my spooky kooky candle and the inside I do just put some crystals as always and golden lipidolite mica. But yeah, this is in my autumnal glow collection. It's a play on like a kooky scientist, but it takes the word cookie and just spells it with a K and it spells spooky, just, you know, like spooky. Um, but anyways, yeah, this definitely takes my number four spot for my favorite fall gourmand fragrance of all time. Okay, and my number three fragrance, I don't even really like. Um, yeah, so this one I have to put it actually, I had it ranked at number two and then I bumped it down to number three just because this is in my year round collection and um, this is not one that just screams fall to me. But this Banana Nut Bread by Candle Science screams fall to so many of my clients. Um, they do try to get this scent all year round, which is why I've decided to just keep it in my artisan collection. But it really sings in the fall and holiday season. Um, to me, it's banana bread. It does have like the walnuts to it. It has the sugar, the nutmeg, the tonka. And yeah, it smells like a mouthwatering, I would say banana pudding by itself. Um, I do blend this one with the sugar cookie fragrance by candlesandsupplies.com. And I will link that fragrance in the description box as well. I will also link my blend in the description box that I use for this one. Um, but yeah, I, I personally don't like this fragrance very much. Um, it's, it's just, it, it doesn't really speak to me, but so many of my clients love it and I will always have it in my candle line. Um, and I do have to put this as my number three just because of how popular it is for me and you just need to know about it. It's popular for a lot of candle makers. I think for a reason because so many people really like this particular banana nut bread um, from Candle Science. In my number two spot, we have a really intriguing, modern, but also classic, um, kind of upscale, well, I wouldn't call this really upscale, but it's gonna lean more gourmet gourmand. Um, this is Apples and Maple Bourbon by Candle Science, and this fragrance I actually brought into my candle line for some of my customers in Kentucky and in the South who really liked 
like that kind of bourbon play with the apples and with the maple. This is like a classic thing apparently. Um, I'm not a southerner myself, so I can't really say that I know that firsthand at all, but most of my customers from the south have been asking me for something with maple and with bourbon. So this apples and maple bourbon from Candle Science definitely has been a big hit for me. You get apple notes in this, but you also do get a lot of butter notes to this and a lot of like caramelized like caramelized spice notes it's not a spicy fragrance but it's definitely like a baked down apple i would say in this one that the bourbon is very light and it's very caramelized it's not a straight alcoholic bourbon at all you could just sell this as a baked apple or an apple and maple um if you think that your clients would get turned off by the word bourbon because yeah I mean, it, it really smells like that. And the spices in this fragrance definitely are on the lighter side. Um, I would say that the caramelized notes could be similar to like a honey type of a note. Like you could even brand this one as like a honey soaked apple type of a fragrance um, because you definitely do get those kind of bright apple notes to it, but they are gonna be toned down a little bit more by the soaked honey and sort of uh, caramelized quality to this one. And just so you can all see, this is my apples and maple bourbon candle. I do sell this one just as apple maple bourbon. Um, because so many people, sometimes when you have a name that's so popular, it can be helpful just to sell it as that name because a lot of people know kind of what that can associate with for them. And yeah, so this apple maple bourbon is how I brand this candle and it definitely, definitely takes my number two spot. In my number one spot for my favorite fall bakery gourmand of all time, unquestionably like unquestionably of all time we have spiced honey and tonka by candle science and if you don't shop with candle science and you prefer the flaming candle their tobacco cedar is almost identical i don't know if we're in focus here um or sorry not tobacco cedar tobacco caramel um, their tobacco cedar is very similar to the Nature's Garden um, Cracklin Birch scent, but their tobacco caramel is very, very similar to Candle Science's spiced honey and tonka. Now, even though I am doing a separate video on my favorite fall spice fragrances, um, this one to me definitely has more of the honey in the tonka than it does the spices to it. It's definitely more of a sweet and savory fragrance. Um, you do get some of the spices, but it's not gonna be one that would turn off people who don't like um, you know, cinnamon or those stronger notes. It definitely has less of that and much more of the honey in the tonka. The tobacco leaves really sing in this fragrance. Now, I have had a lot of customers when I put up my description um, for this candle, be turned off by the word tobacco and you do kind of have to educate people if you end up listing tobacco leaves for this fragrance or if you use the tobacco caramel um, by the flaming candle that tobacco leaves do not smell at all like alcohol um, or alcohol. They don't smell at all like cigarette smoke or, you know, pipe smoke. They're not smoky. They're, they're very sweet and nostalgic and herbal um, rather than smoky. And this fragrance also has a lot of oud and light musk. I would call it more of a sheer type of a musk and oud quality to it, as well as I pick up some cedar notes, I believe, in sandalwood. I don't know if they're actually in there, but yeah, in the base, I definitely do get those notes, but it's just a very nostalgic fragrance, I would say, of honey and caramel and light spices. And I get a coriander note to this fragrance as well. I don't know if it actually has coriander in it, but it definitely does to me smell a little bit like it has a little bit of like coriander essential oil to it. This fragrance is so cozy and rich and just nostalgic. Almost whack myself in the face with a cap. And for our honorable mentions today, I am briefly going to note this brandied pear in a long lost hope that Candle Science will hear our cries with this one for all the fans of the original brandy pear and bring back the original brandy pear um but yeah 
This one, um, I do still sell it, and I will share with you all my candle for this one. Um, I sell this one in my year-round collection as my Vinyasa Flow candle, and you know, I definitely still enjoy it. It's not the same as it used to be. I think this one would have ranked like number one if it was how it used to be. And if you watch my content for any amount of time, you know um, about my feelings on this fragrance, so I'm not gonna go all into them again, but yeah, honorable mention. My next honorable mention goes to Hot Apple Pie, and I am obsessed with this fragrance, like mildly obsessed. Um, this is similar to the um, apples and maple bourbon, but this one is more of a classic, like your grandma's kitchen apple pie type of a scent. Um, this fragrance, I grew up with my grandma making apple pie from scratch. It was my absolute favorite pie that she made. And I would always beg her for this pie, especially in the fall with Briar's vanilla ice cream and um, Briar's vanilla bean ice cream, I should say. Um, not just vanilla, but it had to be vanilla bean. Uh, but yeah, I can only give this one an honorable mention just because it is a newer fragrance to me. I have not sold candles with this one, even though I've made test candles and I've been happy with them. And I do plan on adding this one in my rustic collection or in my autumnal glow collection next year. And our next honorable mention goes to Pumpkin Caramel Crunch by Candle Science. And this fragrance to me, if you've tried Candle Science's Caramel Popcorn, um, I think that's what it's called. Um, it reminds me of that. But this one definitely has like some pumpkin to it, yes. Um, to me personally, this fragrance smells like candy corn. So I do sell this as my candy corn candle. And um, this is a new scent for me. So I have not sold this in years prior, but basically I thought that it would be a cute one for kids. It's definitely not um, to my standard of like, I don't know, I, I feel like this is kind of an immature scent and I wouldn't normally sell something like this, but I just, I thought it was really cute to brand it this way and just see how it goes this year. Um, I do pick up notes of warm vanilla sugar, caramel, and butter, and this scent is how I imagine candy corn would smell if it had an actual smell. I don't even, I don't know that it does, but like if you were to take candy corn and melt it and like make it into a beautiful like gourmand aroma. I think it would smell like this pumpkin caramel crunch by Candle Science. And I will keep you all updated on how people like the scent, but this one does have pretty good reviews online as well. And Candle Science does mention in the description, I believe that this is not meant for upscale lines at all. Oh my gosh, yeah, I forgot to share with you all my Honey Citrine Glow candle. So this is how I market the um, Spiced Honey and Tonka by Candle Science. I don't even know if we're in focus, but it has a citrine crystal. And then I do list the three main notes to this one as Golden Honey, Oud, and Spiced Tonka. And as always, I just have crystals and golden lipidolite mica on the top. Okay, and my last honorable mention goes to Brown Sugar and Fig BBW Type by Aztec. Now, I can barely even give this an honorable mention because I've never even made a candle with this fragrance and I just like it out of the bottle. It's really sophisticated and beautiful and it is a spot on dupe if you're familiar with the Bath & Body Works fragrance. Um, to spot on dupe in my opinion. They do a really good job with spot on dupes, but I do have the complaint with a lot of their fragrances that the HT is just not there for me personally. So I don't know if their fragrances are just not formulated for 464 uh, for soy wax. Um, but yeah, I have not tried this particular one, but it is lighter out of the bottle. So my suspicion would be that it's also lighter in a candle. Um, can't confirm that, but it's a very beautiful fragrance. And if you use like a paraffin or a parasoy, I would definitely recommend um, checking this one out if you are looking for a good brown sugar and fig. Well, we do not have any fails for this video. So this does conclude our best gourmand fragrances 
for the fall edition. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below what your favorite fall gourmand fragrance is. I am so curious because like I said, this category was one that I did not like and when I was little and now I've become more and more sort of enthused with it. I wouldn't say that I'm in love with it. Sometimes I feel like I'm in love with gourmands and other times I'm like, no, it's still not my category. So I kind of vacillate back and forth on that one. Um, but anyways, yes, don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss any updates from me. And I'm sending everyone peace, love and light and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.